All right. Can you see my screen? Okay, all right, so welcome. Uh, this is the Future Work Skills Talk. Um, we at UB Minds are thrilled to start 2021 and we wanted to share uh, with you uh, this talk where uh, we invite you to do a self-assessment through the talk. Uh, and then as an outcome, we expect you to uh, plan any uh, possible future actions to drive your future work skills. So as we are super aware, uh, the future will be a series of unimaginable changes and it's getting harder and harder to predict which path it will take. Uh, we are uh, living challenging times and uh, the future is unimaginable. Um, dreams no longer have addresses. Uh, people are leaving their homes to live uh, in other countries or other states or other cities because of this challenging situations that we are facing and because the world has now become flat. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're working from. So this is guiding uh, the way that we will be shaping our future from now on. And then the first question that I would like to ask is from a scale, uh, on a scale from one to 10, um, I will be inviting you to uh, answer a series of questions. And then the first one is, are you connected to yourself? I believe, uh, thanks to John Bravaki, that is a teacher um, that has a YouTube series called Awakening from the Mini Crisis, that we are shifting from the having mode to the being mode, right? And this is a, a awakening from the meaning crisis and it intersects with other crises like political health and our environment. So all of these crises that we are facing, they intersect. And then I brought here a quote uh, that Minush Shafiq uh, said, uh, the director of London School of Economics, that in the past, jobs were about muscles, now they are about brains, but in the future, they will be about the heart. And the importance of understanding your curious and your studios, um, core features, the core competencies that you have. So understand what kind of calm shape professional you are. And I brought here as an example, this is in Portuguese, and, uh, but I brought here an example where one of the people that I worked with in the past had the core, the studios, he was a developer, and then uh, his core um, studies were in technology and programming. And then his curious side uh, was focusing a lot on business, science, music, psychology, and design. What is your T-shape? How does your T-shape looks like? What uh, core competencies you have and in, in which ones are you curious? And all that falls under, uh, hey world, your data will be your brand in the future. Uh, and the good news is that we will have credits for all, right? And to bring an example related to it, uh, in China, you have what is called social credit and your score can go up or down according to your behavior. The national behind it is secret, but bad direction, buying too many games or posting fake news are examples of behaviors that can negatively influence your score. 
And with a negative score, they can take away your dog and even prevent you to um, have your child go to a specific school. What if uh, in the future that we are heading, we could have social credit to do good things uh, for our population and have a positive impact on our neighborhood, on our local community and so forth. Are you connected uh, to this moment? And then the importance of mindfulness that will be the next no brainer. Um, in the past, if you would go running um, in the 1920s, someone would ask you, who's chasing you? And then after that, the doctor swooped in and stated that um, running uh, is good for you, right? So mindfulness, it will be the next no brainer, uh, like eating healthy and uh, taking the meds that your doctor prescribed for you. So to be mindful is to be more precise and detailed in your focus of attention. And at the same time, to have the capacity to expanding to a broader territory for insight. So this is more of uh, a skill to provoke you to look into this and have mindful moments during your day, mindful moments with your colleagues, mindful moments with your family and with you, right? Are you connected to others? The importance of multicultural smarts, especially now in this challenging time when where our teams are distributed and we are working with people from US, from Brazil, in the case of movie minds, Canada, Germany, you name it. So it's becoming more and more important to be able to read people, despite of the fact that we are um, distant uh, in person, right? In reading multiple contexts and different kinds of intelligence. And in this moment here, I put AI as a type of intelligence, of course, and be able to manage the spectrum of knowledge from truth to opinion and start to have a more data-driven mindset, right? And the ability to translate through subtle differences in cultures. What does ownership means in US? What does ownership means in Brazil and so forth? And be able to understand these sub subtle differences and be able to collaborate the best way possible. All of that to build our tribe, pop-up communities will arise from nowhere and in the same velocity that they uh, arise, they will vanish. And that in the future, we will be designing everything and that design is not just about shape anymore or form, but also about function and structure and process and the ability to develop a, a mindset where you will be designing the future that you want, right? Processes, uh, tools, and products, and so forth. And one example that I bring here is Stone Soup, that is a family pop-up community. Uh, Pre-COVID, they uh, were hosting an event in Guatemala where these pop-up communities that bring together different families from all over the world uh, have like two weeks of different workshops to strengthen uh, family and um, the relationships. Are machines your friends? 
the importance of befriending the machines uh, and having the ability to communicate with different levels of AIs that will be um, more and more available uh, to us on our day-to-day -day basis. In digital fluency, the importance of using the correct medium to communicate a given idea or to bring people to a common understanding and considering how you're going to communicate that, if it will be a video, if it will be a GIF, or if it will be a presentation in the importance that digital fluency um, has in this new environment that uh, we are living in, where we have online events, where we have meetups and uh, we want to engage people um, to collaborate and grow. A parenthesis here, the importance of meaning, right? Machines at this point, if you ask them to create meaning for you, they don't know, they, as of today, they don't know what that is, right? So meaning, uh, bringing different ideas, um, distant ideas that at the first glance, they don't seem like something that it would add up uh, and then create a new product. This is something that is specifically related to us humans, right? And then with that, I bring you the third space learning example where AI has been used since 2015 to identify patterns in learning and teaching in order to create positive outcomes for couples. Uh, third space learning is um, a platform where uh, you can learn math, right? Uh, where you can have uh, math lessons. And then uh, Tom Hopper, that is the founder of Third Space Learning, he stated that AI will not replace tutors. In fact, it will help them to be better teachers, understanding where are the gaps in learning and using these gaps and transforming these gaps into opportunities, right? Galaxy Zoo is an online astronomy project is another example that invites its members to classify more than 1 million galaxies. And if we were to defer um, machines to map all of these galaxies, it will take way longer than us as humans collectively mapping what is out there. So uh, the Galaxy Zoo statistics we had at the point uh, when I uh, collected this data, uh, almost 33 uh, K volunteers and uh, almost half more than half a million classifications. Are you able to deal with uncertainty? So where we are going, Assets and the, our safety net has, is broken, right? And uh, we will be sharing assets and risks more and more day by day. And multi-currency networks will be the strange um, element in this future that we are heading to because you can become a millionaire from night to day investing in the right uh, multi-currency network. So I think that this is a skill, uh, an important uh, opportunity for me at least. And then as an example, we have um, the lending club where you can either borrow or invest money and you can uh, borrow money uh, directly to uh, a given person we have several other platforms that provide the same type of um, service. So I just wanted to bring this one as an example. Do you seek meaning? And then I love this Native American proverb where 
it says that tell me a fact and I'll learn. Tell me a truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. So the importance of stories, the stories that you tell yourself, the stories that you tell your colleagues, that the stories that you tell about a, an innovative product that you are building. So stories and narratives, they can persuade us so deeply that they can they contribute to a synchronization between the presenter and the listener. So the importance of communicating your stories the best way possible so that your colleagues, investors, and your team will engage to that given idea that you are presenting because we have a lot of bias, uncertainty bias, confirmation bias, you name it. So the importance of storytelling in a way that it will envision new possibilities and the big stories behind it all. We heard a lot about big data, but what are the big stories behind the world today, right? And futurism will be something that it will be available to all of us, not just in academic and think things as we have today. We have Institute for the Future as a great reference. Marina Gorbiz, that is the director there, is one of the, my personal greatest uh, references ever. And then Future Thinkers, they have a lot of podcasts and information that is available uh, to us in order to better deal with uh, uncertainty, right? And as I was saying, we tend to think about uh, the future narratively and incrementally. We believe that um, in order for something to happen, it will be composed by a series of steps, but the world has exponential opportunities, right? So this is why as incredible as our ideas may be, it is critical to communicate in an impactful way, especially when the idea seems uncertain. And I love this quote by Seth Godin. Uh, he was the former CEO of UUDyne that was later bought by Yahoo. Um, he stated that if you want to teach someone to be a great hockey player, you don't teach them the slap shot. You teach them how to think that they are a great hockey player because they will make the slap shot happen. So the importance of building a great mindset and not to forget who you are when you are facing new and grand opportunities that are out there. And then I brought here the differences between the subtle differences between exponential and incremental thinking, where the exponential thinking, we focus on setting ambitious goals, following the vision, vision maximize learning, personalize as we go, empower decision making, expand influence, and grow your network. The incremental mind focus in doing something better while the exponential focuses on doing something different. Don't get me wrong, uh, incremental opportunities are the kind of opportunities that ensure that we are here and that we have a job and that we continue healthy. They are what uh, make our lives stable as we go, but we need to open our minds to the possibility of having exponential opportunities as we go. With that being said, envision the future that you want. Thank you. Now Thanks. we open for questions. Thank you. Um, 
I'm just going to take over and I'm going to ask a question straight away. Uh, so, Roberta, Ubi Minds works with, you know, finding candidates for, for companies and you guys interview, you know, hundreds and, and thousands of, of candidates. How how well are people adapting to this new scenario? Do you see that there's a lot of professionals available? Uh, is this something that is very new and the market's not ready for yet? What, what's your feeling based on, you know, your, your experience? Uh, I think that uh, the people that we are actively sourcing and uh, communicating to present new opportunities are people that are extremely up to date in terms of practices and soft skills, not just only uh, hard skills, right? So uh, these people are uh, continually working on their uh, improvement as humans, not just as engineers or uh, UX, UI designers, you name it. Did I answer your question? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I think so. Um, yeah, I think this is always this. We've been talking about soft skills for so long, but you know, whoever is working with the HR world, but sometimes um, it seems like it's still very new for for a lot of areas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so this is why, again, uh, I brought the importance of comb-shaped professionals, right? Because it's not just what is your car competency that uh, is in play today, right? It's not just being a good engineer. It's not being just a good uh, designer. It's not being just a good project manager. You need to, uh, in order to strengthen your uh, professional self, you need to uh, add other features, right? Uh, in the development world, we, we use features uh, to have like a strong uh, profile to be able to cope with uh, innovative product development. All right, uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, right. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.